OK, so now let's talk about data quality. So why do we care about the data quality? Uh, so let's read the news. And this is a true story. And I think from this news, the answer is basically that with low data quality, so we will cost a lot of money. OK, uh, so in this story that we see that <coughs> uh, this is a story from uh, 2011 that after the financial crisis, uh, we can see that the National Association of the Retailers, or NAP, they had some errors in the uh, real estimate uh, markets. OK, so we always have those data quality changes. So I think the lesson here we have learned is that uh, we should never trust the data. We can see that the cost of the bad data is more than 600 billion uh, for US each single year. Okay, and also if we want to be more precise is that we should never trust the assumption of the data. Okay, so when we have the data, uh, when we look at the data, so we should always have to challenge it, to question it, question the source, dig in, and also explore the data. Okay, uh, so we have to make sure that our data is clean, is relevant, is trusted, and can be leveraged. Okay, uh, so, and actually, so that is the step that, that, that we should always check uh, before we can have any conclusions or generate some, some insight from our data. So let's see some examples. Uh, we know that uh, in the relational database, we have very strict um, limit, um, limitations of the constraints to make sure that our data are consistent and also integrity. However, there are still some uh, mistakes that cannot be checked um, by relational database and also in SIMAS structured uh, non-SQL database and also in data lake um, it's also even harder to guarantee the data quality. So for example here <coughs> so when we have the data talking about city or state you may have different you know expressions for the state or the city and they are all talking about the same place. Okay those are something that we cannot uh, eliminate by using the constraints or by using the um, rules that are in the database. And also here, this is another example. OK, so for example, that there is a person that called John Smith. And they may register multiple accounts where when they talking about when they type the names, so, so they may use different names, the format, and also using different address they may still be the same address. And if that person has multiple cell phone numbers or email accounts, OK, so all those records will be considered different person, but actually they belong to the same person. OK, so those are some examples of the data quality. So late data quality, low data quality challenges. And uh, so we, we know that we should use database if possible and also even we are using database and we still have those challenges so that that's why that we need to process our data to clean our data and also remember that do not use Excel as a data storage first Excel is not a database secondly Excel is terrible uh, if you want to store some very important data. So for example, if you have copy and paste errors by using Excel like this, it's very common. By using database, uh, it, it can be avoided. But in Excel, it is highly possible. And also, you may have to max up the types, which Excel will accept. But if you are using a relational database, uh, normally, uh, you can define those constraints to eliminate those errors. And also sometimes you may just delete the data. 
okay, by accident, uh, accidentally deleted the data. And however, in database, so you can have multi, you can have backups, so that um, and also you can have data that uh, duplicate your data. Now, if you remember that the date cloud data set that we talked in the data mining class, so that can help you to recover data from such kind of those human errors or some of those uh, some uh, disasters. So data cleaning is very, very important and also is the most tedious part in data analysis. So we know that a data scientist normally will spend 60% of their time to clean the data and almost 20% of time in organizing the data. So data cleaning and also process will take about 80% of your time at, and you, you only have 20% time that you're really analyzing, visualizing your data and also gaining insight from your data. Okay. Uh, we also mentioned the ETL process. So now hopefully the ETL process uh, will make sense to you. So ETL stands for the extract, transform and the load. So that is the process that we cl collecting data from the raw data set and transform the data into a common type so that a type that we can easily analyze, we can make queries, and we can also um, can visualize the data. So normally the data is loaded from the, the raw data source into the final location so that can support data analytics or data visualizations. Uh, so this is the chart that uh, to illustrate the ETL process. Uh, so you have the data resources. Okay, so they can be from different Excel sheet or from the database. Uh, we need to clean the data. We need to transform the data into the format like we apply our business logic. Okay, and we load the data for our uh, future analysis. For example, uh, this is the online analytic. Okay. OL AP system, so that your data warehouse that can support uh, complicated queries. Or you can put that one into a, another database. Okay, so if the data is not very huge, and you can do some ad hoc uh, analysis. And you can also load data back to the data lake. Okay, so that for some uh, operational analytics. Okay. Uh, so here, also remember that we, we mentioned that relational database, okay, RDS, uh, data warehouse, okay, so those are great tools for the BI, so business intelligence analysis. Uh, for the data lake, so which is great for the unstructured data, so that is great for AI, so artificial intelligence, so that is, we can use computer to um, understand the data like uh, images or videos that they, they can do some facial recognitions, uh, voice matching, etc. or natural language process. Database, especially relational database and also data warehouse, uh, is great to support the business intelligence like Tableau. 